Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Awesome. G'day, folks. How are you today? Good to see you at church. Seriously, where else would you want to be on a Sunday? But welcome whether you're here in person. If, if you're coming late, uh, try to find a seat somewhere. This is a good problem to have. We are actually, most services now at this church on a Sunday are filled. Personally, if I was the pastor here, I think you need to add a third service, mate. Seriously. I mean, hey, build it and they will come, you know. So, But maybe you're a regular. Maybe you come occasionally. Maybe you're visiting. Maybe somebody invited you to church today. They said, oh, you need to come to church today. We have Steve Irwin's cousin speaking at our church. Welcome. Just kidding. But I personally believe it's no accident I'm here. I believe it's no accident you're here. And it's my prayer, whether you believe in God or whether you don't or whether you're on the fence, whether you're close to the kingdom of God or far away, I pray that you may experience the power of this gospel that you wouldn't just hear us sing about God and talk about God, that you would experience the power of His love, experience the power of His mercy, of His forgiveness, experience hope today. But as followers of Christ, we believe there is hope, but it's found in Christ and Christ alone. Amen. So uh, it's awesome to be back in the country of Texas. Uh, my wife sends her greeting and love. Uh, my better half, my wife, is not able to be here this trip. She was really disappointed because she was so excited uh, about coming to Texas. Why? Because my wife is a passionate cowboy supporter. Any cowboy supporters in the house today? Well, it's funny, I love your enthusiasm, but I've got to tell you some bizarre experience. My wife and I, in the last two weeks, have immigrated to the country of Florida, and we were at our new church where we're based, about an hour from Tampa, Florida, and I was excited, and I was really happy, and I, I said, g'day to my new church, and I, I said to them, hey, how many cowboy supporters we got here today? They nearly stoned me and threw me out of the church. And somebody reminded me after church, you idiot. You realize we're near Tampa. This is the, uh, who are they? The Bucky, Bucky ears or whoever they are. I don't know. So now my wife and I, we have to sit in one corner of the church alone. <laughs> but it's great to be here. And, and I pray today as we come around God's word, as we look at God's word, that he would in- Encourage us, he would convict us, he would inspire us, he would bring revelation, he would that we would have one of those aha moments. I I see that and I pray that God would continue to speak to each and every one of us in a simple, in a plain way that we can comprehend today. Amen. Before we come around God's word, I, I'll let you know when you moved, walked in, you may, may have seen a table at the back there with a couple of canvases on it. That is my personal artwork. I took those photos, that is my artwork of different different places the Lord has taken my wife and I to minister around the country. Uh, If you'd like to support our ministry, we do work in public schools and drug and alcohol rehab with the military in this nation. That is one way that you can support us and be a part of what God's called my wife and I to do. That would mean so much to us. But to let you know, I almost sold out in the last service. I think I have six canvases left back there. And I'd appreciate if you'd like to be a part of what God is doing through our lives. Amen. I'll be back. Uh, I'd rather sign a canvas than, than sign a photograph of myself. Hey, can I sign a picture of myself? So that's a bit cooler, I think. Amen. All right. Okay. That's cool. You ready to come around God's word? What, three of you? The rest of you aren't interested? <laughs> All right. You can get a little bit enthusiastic about God's word. That's okay. The Lord won't be offended if you show a little bit of enthusiasm and passion today. And it's okay to get excited in church. Because I know this afternoon, those of you who are football fans, I try to shut you up this afternoon when your beloved Cowboys are playing, you know. As if it's okay to get excited about a bunch of guys kicking a pigskin filled with air around watching a bunch of guys jump around and get all excited when they have a touchdown. I think it's excited to come to church and get enthusiastic about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. It's okay. All right. 
You know, the word, the, this world we live in, you can't escape it. We're alive, we're growing up, we're on life's journey in this world. But the world, the spirit of this world will never understand why we Christians are so passionate, hopefully, about the Word of God. You know, the world has no understanding and revelation of why do we base our life around what God says. As Christians, if you want to know your identity, you don't run to social media. You, you don't sign up a, with a political party. You don't, you know, go to the world. If you want to know who your identity is as a follower of Christ, you go to the Bible. It's the Word of God from the Creator. No one knows you and I better than the Creator. If you want to know your identity, you look at who you are in Christ in the Word. If you want to know what marriage looks like, you don't go to the world. You go to where? The Bible. If you want to know the author, you read his book. (laughs) If you want to know about life, sexuality, am I a man, am I a woman? Because there's really only two genders and everything else is just the world's interpretation of humanity. (laughs) But if you want to know your identity, you go to God's Word. And for Christians, we base our life on, well, what does God say? What's God's voice on this? What, what's His heart? The Bible means everything to us. The Bible is just not an extra accessory we occasionally add to our busy lifestyles. As followers of Christ, we are all called, everybody say all. All, all called to be students of the Word of God. We're all called to study and understand what the Bible says. Pastor Marcus, you'll relate to this. You remember in the olden days? You remember when they, we used to wear those bracelets if you're around church circles? What would Jesus do? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Sadly today, I think a lot of people wouldn't have a clue what Jesus would do. It's like we go to every other source. We're running and seeking this people. If I want to understand God, I got to spend time getting to know Him through the inspired Word of God. You understand? The world wants to look at you and I and know if we are followers of Christ, what do we honestly believe? You can't just blur the lines. I want to hang around people who are passionate and have a deep conviction, not just with emotion, but with a foundation and a theology and an ideology based in the Word of God. That gives me confidence if we know our pastors and our leaders have a depth of intimacy and understanding of who God is through the Word. Amen. Could you imagine if you were going in for surgery? And before surgery, you're having some crucial operation. You go to the doctor and say, doctor, so you're a specialist in this area of surgery. Yes, I am. So tell me a bit about yourself. Well, I've never really gone to school. (laughs) I've actually never even gone to university. Actually, I've never really studied anything about what's involved to be a doctor. I have no practical, no nothing. Hey, but I got the tag. I'm a doctor. I guarantee that would not fill you with a lot of confidence and willingly lay on the operating table. Imagine if you were getting on to fly somewhere and you're sitting in your seat, they go through all the rigmarole, then the pilot comes on and says, hey, g'day folks, how are you today? Uh, I want to let you all know the the regular pilot's sick today, so I volunteered. (laughs) I I was a passenger and there was no pilot and they were going to cancel the flight, but I said, crikey, I'll give it a go. Just so you all know, I don't want you to be shocked, but I've never flown in my life. I've never studied. I have no qualification, no education. I wouldn't have a clue about flying a plane, but crikey, how hard can it be? I guarantee you we would all be promptly getting up and leaving our seat and getting off that plane. The same way as followers of Christ. We can't just tell the world, oh, I believe in God. I believe in this. Well, why? Well, because I do. No, we need to have a deep conviction, not rooted in my personal opinion. But well, what does God say? Because the lines are being blurred today on a biblical perspective on marriage, on life on hope, 
on marriage, of anxiety, of fear, depression, health. The lines are being blurred where it's almost like a biblical worldview is not even being tolerated or accepted today. So today we're going to be reminded, okay, from the Word of God, the importance of the Bible the importance of applying ourselves. If you have your Bibles, would you open them? If not, we're going to have a Bible in the sky for you up there. Oh, look at that. Do your best to follow up there. I'll personally be reading from the Australian Outback version. (laughs) Just kidding. Listen to this. This is brilliant. This is a healthy reminder. Timothy reminds you and I, so on life's crazy journey, we don't forget. This is like our spiritual compass that brings us back. Why? To the Word of God. Why can't we run to TED Talk or to social media or or this group? No, no, no. We go to the Bible. Why? 2 Timothy reminds us 3, chapter 3, verse 16. Listen to this. Every scripture, just not our favorite ones or the ones we like, but every scripture is God breathed, given by His inspiration and profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline in obedience and, in, and for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will in thought, in purpose and action. So that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well-fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. There is no way that we are going to be the husband, the dad, the wife, the woman, the, the disciple, the follower. There's no way that we are going to be the man or woman God's called us to be and to fulfill why he's placed us on this world. Unless you and I are growing in our study, that we become and learn what it is to be proficient in the Word of God. There's no shortcut. It's not like, well, give me the cleft notes. Just give me the headlines and all that other stuff. It's just too too tedious. The Bible tells us here, if you want to grow, It's for reproof, instruction, conviction of sin, correction when we get off course, discipline in obedience, and for training in righteousness, in holy living. So the Word of God has the ability to conform us to God's will in thought, purpose, and action. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, reminds us again, the Bible is like a spiritual compass that brings us back to a place of realigning our attitude, our thoughts, our heart, our motivation back with the kingdom of God. Hebrews reminds us, listen to this, it's brilliant. For the word of God, Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. And there is no, is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Woo! Woo! If that don't get you excited, you're dead. (laughs) We need to have a raise the dead baptismal service today. The importance of the word of God is just not as a take it or leave it accessory. Just, well, I know a few scriptures. I know the main ones. The rest is just to no. As followers of Christ, we are all learning to apply ourselves and become students of the Word of God. For it is through the relationship of God's Spirit working in us as we understand His nature and who He is through the conformity to God's Word that you and I are being changed. Amen? Amen. I wish we could shortcut the process, you know, like going to Disney, mate. I don't know who goes there anymore, but uh, if you go to one of these theme parks, you know, you have the regular line. No, no, no. We have the fast track line. Avoid the crowds. In the kingdom of God, there's no fast track. 
there's a process of growth. <laughs> there's no magic recipe, no magic formula. There's a process of growth. And the foundation of believers is daily studying and reading and learning about the great author, the creator, through his word, through his book, through his manual. Amen? Amen. Oh, three of you are awesome. We live in a culture today. Listen, we live in a world when you wake up every day and you get out of your bed and you start your daily life, you are walking in the midst of two realities. Now, depending on how you're wired, it will determine which reality consumes your heart, your life, your passion, your anxiety, your fears, your wallet. Two realities are going to capture who you are and capture your life in the direction you walk. The first reality that no one can escape it. This is the first reality. It's this natural world we live in. The responsibility of life, the responsibility of work, going to work, earning money, putting food on the table, paying the bills, providing for our family, that much anticipated and loved time of the year, tax season, paying taxes. You know, this life, the natural world, isn't it relentless? I mean, it will, ref it will not for a second allow you to forget it to allow you to check out. It seems daily, this life has the ability to just keep us all so preoccupied. This life will consume our hearts, our time, our mind, our energy, our resources. This life will, it has the ability to even knock us to our knees at times, take the joy, the hope, the excitement. This life has the ability to wear us all down. Crikey, what we've been through in this country over the last several years, we've had everything thrown at us but the kitchen sink. And that's probably coming next year. Be patient. No, seriously, there doesn't this life, you can't escape it. I guarantee you tomorrow morning when you wake up, what is the most favourite day of the week other than Sunday? Woohoo, Monday. Monday morning is a wake-up call slap in the face. Here we go again, the responsibilities of life. But as a follower of Christ, I've got to tell you, it is so easy to spend your life and get to the end of your life and realize that you have totally been consumed 24-7 with the cares and the worry and the ideology and the exploits and the hunger and the passion and the desires and the needs of this life. And Jesus understood that. Why, why do you think the Lord said in Matthew chapter 11, he said to the people, hey, if you're tired, if this life has worn you out, if you feel like the wind has been taken out of your sail, if you are beat up, if you are tired, if you are weary, no wonder Jesus said, come unto me. Right. He understood how this life has the tendency to wear us all down, to take hope from all of us. One moment you can feel like I'm on top of the mountain. Next thing you can get a diagnosis for yourself or a loved one, a sickness straight away. The wind seems like it's knocked out of your sail. This life is relentless. But today I'm here to remind all of us that there is another reality called the kingdom of God. There is another reality that coexists. We might not always see it. This is a heavenly kingdom. But according to the scripture, let me read this. I don't think you have it up there, mate. I'm sorry. I didn't want to stress out my sound guy up there. There's a scripture that reminds us in Hebrews chapter 6. Now you got this one, mate. You're good. It says this. It's a reminder as we go through this crazy journey called life. Life blows us this way, it blows us that way. We get wounded, offended. We go through heartache, loss, divorce, shipwreck, storm. But this scripture, the word of God reminds you and I, no matter what we go through, no matter what we face, do not forget this. Listen to this. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, it reminds you and I today. We... That you and I as believers have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. 
It enters, it's talking about Jesus here. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. Quickly, a beautiful illustration about the sacrifice Christ made at Calvary, where you and I were once alienated, hostile enemies to God. In His mercy, because of what Christ did at Calvary now, God has made a way because of what Jesus did into that holy of holies behind the curtain, figuratively speaking, where the creation now, not from a distance with fear and trembling, but now we can come into the presence of God and actually have a relationship have communion and intimacy with the Creator. This scripture reminds you and I that no matter what we go through in America today, no matter what this nation, what the world, a pandemic, invading forces, no matter what we face, do not forget, follower of Christ, that you have an anchor. You have an anchor connecting you to eternal sacrifice, what Christ did for you and I. This anchor, oh sure, the wind might blow us this way. We might get knocked off course this way. No matter where the world blows us, we have this tether that keeps us connected. And we remember as we press on and keep going that God's not gonna abandon us as long as we keep our eyes fixed on Him and our hearts connected to Him. This tether daily, pulls us closer and closer as we walk through this life. This is not just for the special few. This is for you and I if you are a follower of Christ. We have this anchor, this foundation. This is the one I don't think you have, my brother, from another mother out there. So just don't stress out back there. I'll read this to It says in, uh, oh, you might have it, I don't know. You might have it. No matter what we go through, this anchor, this connection. Romans, everyone say Romans chapter 8. It's in the Bible, trust me. Chapter 8 of Romans. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Oh, it might be tough. It might be hard. Seems in this nation, the culture is becoming more and more hostile to people who are willing to have a biblical worldview, a conviction of sexuality, on marriage, of life, a conviction, yeah, there is hope, but guess what? It's found in Christ and Christ alone. <laughs> you know, it seems more and more hostility, but the reminder, writer reminds you and I, no matter what you're going through, this present suffering isn't worth comparing to what's going to be revealed in you and I. You might read that and think, that is, so, that is so out of touch with today. Obviously, the writer, when he wrote that, things were a lot easier back then. The, the, the writer back then was clueless in regards to the issues, the stress, the pressure, the lifestyle of what we're dealing with in the world in America today. If you are thinking like that, ha! You're crazy, mate. Are you serious? You've obviously not studied Scripture. At the time when that statement was made, the early church were being put to death, thrown in prison, burned to life, fed to lions. Families were being executed in front of each other, torn apart. Have you had that sort of week? So I'm not diminishing or making light of the struggles we face today. But when that writer understood that statement, he understood very well the pressures, the hardship, the pain of life. And it is still applicable today as the day it was written to remind us, no matter what we face, man, is, are things going to get tough? Absolutely. Is it going to get hard? Yep. But no matter what we go through, it doesn't compare to the pain, the suffering, Everything we go to doesn't compare to the reward that we're going to receive one day if we stay focused. If we stay focused on the journey. Come on. Come on. One day we're going to have to stand before the Lord and give an account of our lives. Really? We're setting for the greatest test, the greatest exam of our lives. How's that feel? Wake up call. 
I've got to be honest with you. I was kicked out, expelled from every school I ever attended. I, don't even, I never even had a high school education. I hated school. If I was at school one day and I found out that there was an exam next period, I would emotionally, mentally, physically fall so apart, I would go and hide in the toilet for the whole period. I'd hear the announcements being made because they knew we were at school because I was there for the roll call. I heard announcements around the school. John James, where are you? <laughs> and I'm hiding in the toilet. I mean, I, I fall apart. I, my first years of driving a vehicle, I never even had a license. I was so, oh, seriously, I drove with no license, fake license, anything. I was so fearful of an exam. I just couldn't deal with it. Fear gripped me. So just imagine, I've got to tell you, good folks, how I felt as now a follower of Christ. Woohoo, I'm in. And then I realize I'm sitting for the greatest exam of my life. I'm like, what? Seriously? Man, I'm in big trouble here. Man, I, I'm definitely going to fail this exam. There's no hope for me. I know my track record. This is so not cool. And then one day, Somebody shared with me. I had the brilliant revelation. They said with me, listen, you are sitting for the greatest exam for your life, but our heavenly father, our heavenly teacher, he is so awesome that he's given you and I all the answers for the exam. <laughs> How brilliant is that? I never sat an exam like that in my life. And I thought, crikey, at the end of the exam, I have the potential to be an honor student. <laughs> I have the potential to be an A-grade student in all areas of my life. Is that awesome or what for you and I? So we understand the journey we're on, building our lives around what God says. So often I think we need to take the time to just switch social media off. Stop running to everybody else to tell you what you need to believe, what you need to think, the way you need to love. Stop running to the world. Let's get back to looking for the answers of life through God's Word, building our ideology, our theology around God's Word. It's not just enough to tell the world, Jesus is the answer. Really? Why is that? Oh, because he is. <laughs> well, why is that? Well, because he is. Well, wait a second. Hey, hey, Siri, how many religions claim that they have the answer for the world in Syria? There are 128 around, blah, blah, blah. What makes your religion any different? If we don't learn to be students of the Word, how, like the Scripture says, how are we going to be thoroughly equipped for every good work? Thoroughly equipped how to be the husbands, the dads, the fathers. How, how are we going to be thoroughly equipped when the storms of life come? The heartache, the shipwrecks, the pain, the grief. How, how, do we, how do we face life if we don't have a biblical foundation of who God is, who He has called us to be, and how is the way that I should respond to this? I got a lot of stuff. We're going to go a bit of, bit of a different direction. My friend back there, so you, you can probably just put your feet up and relax for a minute. I'll, I'll start to wrap up. I'm going to go a bit different at this morning, this session. A little while ago, I was speaking in a small community in Virginia. I was the guest speaker in public schools all week. It was brilliant. We had a wonderful time getting into the public schools. Half the kids came to the school assemblies having no idea of this crazy Australian in front of them. They thought I was going to wrestle crocodiles, ride kangaroos and skin koalas. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Had a great time. And then at the end of the week on a Saturday, we did a community event where we invited the kids out to an environment where we could preach Christ. The place was packed. We saw so many kids take that first step towards the kingdom of God. There was one young girl there, beautiful young girl. She was impacted in the school. She came on the Saturday, responded to the kingdom of God. God just touched her. It was beautiful. It moved my heart because I have two daughters. It was just fantastic. The next day on the Sunday, I was speaking at a local church. 
I felt so VIP, I was the guest speaker. <laughs> this beautiful young girl, she came to Sunday again to church. This time she brought her mother. She came up to me, oh, Mr. James. She was just glowing. It's like, man, God had touched her. She introduces me to her beautiful mother, this little lady. You ever met somebody and even before they open their mouth, you look at them and there's just something about them. This woman just shone with God, the love of God. And she introduced me to her mom. She was so proud to bring her mum to church. She was a believer. And I just saw them in church, her, the mum, a believer, with her new daughter, a new believer, worshipping God. It was fantastic. After church, we're having a few coffees, having something to eat, hanging around. The pastor comes up to me and says, Hey, John, you know that young girl that got touched? Her mother there. Do you know who that lady is? I said, Nah, mate, no idea. The young girl just introduced me to her mum. He went, oh my goodness, that mighty woman has the most shocking but incredible testimony you could ever hear. I'm like, really? What, 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 what is it? He said, not that long ago, that beautiful lady got up one Saturday morning, said to the oldest child, they had eight children. Crikey, they've been busy like your church, mate. Eight children <laughs> said to the oldest one, hey, look after your younger brothers and sisters. I'm just going down to the corner store to get a few groceries. I'll be back in a little bit. How many times she done that before? Drives down the store, gets the groceries, driving home, pulls into her street to behold the most shocking sight that I imagine a parent could ever behold. There was a gas explosion. And her home was no longer there. Six of the eight children were instantly killed. So he's telling me this story. And I'm standing there and I'm looking at that woman over there, smiling and talking. And I thought to myself, my God, woman, how are you even functioning? How, how are you even standing on your two feet? How, how, how are you even able to stand in church and raise your hands and sing, God is good? Why aren't you twisted and bitter and angry and wounded and hurt and jaded? God, why did you let this happen? And I realized something. That that mighty woman has an anchor fixed. She has anchor point in her life. This anchor that connects her to the kingdom of God. This mighty woman has understood the words of Jesus in Matthew 11 and says, if you are weary, beaten, worn out, if you are wounded and hurting, come unto me. This woman has had a revelation of supernatural comfort and peace that's beyond understanding. Instead of running from God, I, this woman ran into the arms of God who her identity is in Christ. She had revelation through God's Word where the Scripture declares in Psalms that God is actually close to the wounded and brokenhearted. I'm not going to stand here and, and lie and say, I'm sure every day that woman woke up, she thought, oh, my life is great. I'm sure there were days where she could barely hold back the tears. There were days that life stung so bad. There were days that she may have felt like just giving up. It's too much. That anchor, that hope that could only be found in her relationship and devotion to God. When the lies of this world, this world wanted to smash her and just make her jaded and wounded and bitter and angry, she ran to God's Word. It's like a spiritual compass. I've lost my way in life. Where is true north? The good news is for you and I today is 
I have no guarantees for what tomorrow holds. But the good news is, no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. But God is drawing you and I daily into a place of fellowship with Him. My wife and I have made a commitment with each other. We're doing our best to keep it. That we dare not start our day. We dare not walk out the front door of our home to face whatever life is going to throw at us today. We dare not walk out our home any day unless we spent time in God's Word. Just sitting. It's not about, well, who does the longest win? It may be five minutes, 10 minutes, 20, whatever. But prioritizing God, there is no way in hell that I'm going to be able to be the disciple, the follower of you, unless I put an anchor point again today in your word. Help me love, help me forgive, help me be strong, help me be an authentic representation of who you are. The good news is, folks, that today's a new day. God is not here with a whip or a stick or a stone in His hand. The Scripture tells us that His mercies are renewed afresh every day. I am so glad that following the Lord is a marathon and not a hundred-yard dash. Because if it was, I would have been disqualified long ago. Have I lost my way at times? Yes. Have I at times gotten it wrong? Yes. There were times that I did not honour God, was willing to follow the advice, the ideology, the thinking of everything else. But what does God say? The good news is that today's a new day. Today we can ask, Holy Spirit, I've got to be honest with you, Lord, I don't really have a hunger for your word. (laughs) Holy Spirit, today, would you start to cause a hunger to grow? If it's only one minute a day, start there and stop each day, each night before you go to bed. If it's one minute, so be it. Take that minute and just stop and listen and allow God to speak to us. Believe that that hunger would grow that it'd go to two minutes, three. And it's not out of, well, you need to do X amount of hours a day. It's out of relationship with Him. The more I get to know Him, the more I want to know Him. There is no way in the world that I'm going to have the ability to be the husband I need to be. Are you serious? The Scripture says, husbands, Love your wives as Christ loved the church. I'm like, crikey, you couldn't set the bar a bit lower? Look at me. I'm a little short guy. And you're asking me to go for the world record in high jump? I'm like, I I can't do that. I'm divorced. My last marriage, I made a mess of it. My track record, when I tried to do things my way, just didn't work out. So Holy Spirit, Show me. God, I'm going to go to your word. Teach me how to love. Teach me how to be the husband. Teach me how to honor my wife. God, I'm going to look in your word. Renew my mind. Change me through the word that's alive and active and powerful. Man, if you you struggle with porn, don't allow the enemy to... uh, condemn you like you're the only one in a boat without a paddle let me say get a ticket and get in line I don't think there's a man alive on the planet that hasn't struggled with the visual candy of sexuality of looking at things like how am I going to overcome this well I've got to go to God's word and not just hey let me read a passage and it'll magically woo, work in my life it's as we allow the word of God to begin to renew our mind meditating God's Word. Allow the Word to rewire us because in areas of my life, the circuitry, the wiring is so messed up. (laughs) God has to reformat the hard drive, all right? The good news is today's a new day. God's not here to judge you on yesterday. You can't change yesterday. You may be divorced. You may be in the process of separation. You may carry unforgiveness, bitterness. All right. 
We all have baggage. We all have issues. We all have wounds, regrets. Today's a new day, God. But I'm not going to take another step living the way I think. I want to have a biblical worldview. And that's why you and I as followers of Christ, we need to be committed to the Word of God. What does God say? And I want to encourage you, don't allow everyone else on social media to tell you, take the time to build the intimacy of your devotion with Him personally for you. Amen? Would you bow your heads? Maybe there's ones here today. I, I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a visitor. But maybe there's ones here today and you're, you're a visitor. Maybe there are ones here today and this whole God thing, this the very talk about having a relationship, intimacy, knowing the Creator is pretty foreign to you. But I believe it's no accident you're here. Maybe there's ones here and you've never taken that first step at the foot of the cross in repentance. God, I'm a sinner. God, I don't know you. God, I open up my heart to the Savior. Because we're all in desperate need of saving, let me tell you. <laughs> we need the Savior. May, or maybe you're here and you've gone to church for years. But the busyness, the cares, the worries of this life have maybe blown you off course. But today God is drawing you back to a place of intimacy and relationship with Him. If that's you today, for the first time, oh, God is speaking to you about recommitting your life. Would you just raise your hand? And I want to pray for you. Anyone here today? Thank you. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. Yes, thank you. You can put them down. Thanks for being honest. I'll wait a few more seconds. Anyone else, if you haven't raised your hand? Thank you back there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. One last time. Father, I pray for every person who, who did raise their hand. I guess a simple gesture, a hand raise, but I believe so much more today, a prayer that simply cries out and says, Savior, please help me. An acknowledgement that I can't fix myself. I can't change myself. An acknowledgement that there is hope but it's found in Christ and Christ alone. It's found in repentance at the foot of the cross. Father, those ones that raised their hand, whatever their cry was, you know, but let today be an anchor point. Let today be a day when they experience the power of your mercy, of your grace, of your love, forgiveness. Let it not be an emotional thing. Well, I was emotionally moved, so I raised my hand. Let today be the first day of taking responsibility of the direction their life is walking now. Let them know that they're not alone, but they're a part of now of an awesome family, the kingdom of God called local church. Thank you for every one of those miracles today in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Before I hand it back to my distant brother from another mother, I want to ask you to please pray for my wife and I as we continue to travel as missionaries to America, as we go into the public schools, and maybe we can talk one day about doing something in the schools in Absolutely. this county. Absolutely. As we go into the drug and alcohol rehab, as we go into the military facilities. Uh, I just connected with a wonderful gentleman that he's a Christian brother that, that works with the Pentagon in regards to working with the military in the U.S. to help them build healthy marriages from a biblical perspective. Such great opportunity in this nation. Amen. There aren't a shortage of opportunities out there for you and I to bring hope. So please pray for my wife and I as we travel as missionaries to America. Amen. What a novel idea. What a title, eh? missionary to America. God bless you guys. It's been an honor. Don't forget I'll be down there at the resources. I so I got six more canvases. I don't want to take them back on the plane. If you'd love one, there's six left down there. Come up and say g'day and I'd love to uh, sign the canvas for, for you and thank you if you'd like to sow into our ministry. Love you guys. Thank Amen. you for your patience. Amen. Thank you brother. Love you. What is, what's crack, crikey? Crack, what, do you, what is that? What? Cracky? Crikey? Crikey. No, cr crikey. Crikey. Cri no, crikey. What's wrong crikey. with you? Crikey, know, mate. I'm, I'm asking. I don't know. Is it Spanish? What is that? Crikey.
You realise I'm from Australia? Yeah, I understand everything. Okay, 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 I just okay, wanted to clarify that. Okay. <laughs> it could be. Then, why? What the? Move. <laughs> I love you. Hey, I don't, I don't know if you guys know this, but man, I, I love this guy. We love this guy. We had a great time this, this past weekend, right, man? And uh, just had a, a life changing experience. But um, be in prayer for them. Make sure and support them. You want to give a little more offering, just put make it, make it available to that. Just put it in those black boxes. And uh, let's keep praying for them. Amen. Not for the Buccaneers, but just for you and your spouse, Tracy. Love you. Uh, real quick, um, this Tuesday, we are, it's Halloween or whatever, fall, we're having a fall fest for the, our community. And so we need a bunch of still. It's going to be cold. It's going to be awesome. I love the, the weather. It's going to change. But we need a bunch of more candy. So if you could help us out by doing that, specifically Sweet Tarts and Smarties. All right. And uh, we'll see you there Tuesday night. God bless you. Have a great week. See you Tuesday. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.